Well guys, this is where I've been getting my Windsor one here in Fort Worth. I've been getting a lot of questions about it. This is the only place I know of around here that actually sells the Windsor one. So this is kind of my new favorite place. Twenty-seven. Yep. <laughs> I'm leaving now, heading to the job site. We're gonna get to work and pick up where we left off last week. Finish carpentry TV, <laughs> best one on YouTube. You wanna learn some? Watch his videos. <laughs> Hey, one good thing about traffic is uh, that guy saw me. He's a viewer of the channel, and he just flagged me down. He's like, dude, I watch all your stuff, so I really appreciate it. These are all our finished boards right here. We spent the whole day yesterday getting the rough framing done. And if you caught the last video from last week, it was the same exact project that we're doing here, but at another house. Same floor plan, same community here, just a different location. So I showed a little bit of the rough framing in the last video. And now at this video, we're already up to the point and now we're ready to get started on these finished boards. So here's a look at the room that we're working in. And this one was pretty straightforward. There were some obstacles that had to be moved or rather they're going to have to be moved. Like these speakers, um, we had some lights over here that we had to move. But other than that, it was not too big of a deal. I had this ceiling fan right here. I had to put a hanger on there and drop that through. That's actually gonna sit right in the middle of this beam, and this beam is right in the middle of the uh, fireplace detail there. So you can see that, that'll look real nice. This is like the biggest pocket screw bundle I've ever gotten. I also got this at Teague Lumber this morning. Never even seen a 1200 count inch and a quarter coarse thread pocket screws in one place. I need to go up a little more on my side. Okay, so now that we have this board installed, it's good to go. We need to add the sideboards, we need to wrap it. And we left a space right here in our framing so we could fit our one by back there. I have a scrap right here, I can show you that. So this will just slide back up in there. And the way we're gonna install this, it's actually gonna be a three quarter offset. So what I mean by that is it's gonna be dropped three quarters from the previously installed board. So it'll sit right there. And the reason I choose three quarters is because this material thickness is three quarters. So you see the proportions, they just look correct. One other thing you may notice is that this board doesn't go all the way up to the ceiling. That's not a problem at all because this whole project is gonna get wrapped in crown molding. So it's, it's irrelevant that that space isn't filled. And that's actually a good thing. And I recommend that if you're gonna wrap a project like this in crown, don't go all the way up to the ceiling with your sideboards that wrap the beam. If you do that, you're gonna have to deal with joists that are out of whack, spaces in the ceiling that roll from those joists. And the ceiling may look straight, but when you put a straight board on it over the span of 18 or 20 foot, you're gonna have some imperfections. So what that would affect, if you did it that way, you wouldn't be able to have a true three quarter here. You would have to be at the mercy of the ceiling. So without, you know, pushing this all the way up and depending on the ceiling being straight, we can just get a little spacer here, make sure we got a three quarter and then shoot it into this blocking. 
this blocking, all of this blocking on this whole project is screwed from the beam side of this board that's actually screwed into the joist. It's screwed, they're screwed down in. So shooting into this and installing on this is essentially the same as shooting into the framing of the house. It's a solid install. So now that we have this whole board installed, we can go ahead and button this up and just shoot nails right into here. And we'll do it the rest of the way down as well. Now, the next step in this thing, we can measure from this. So what I can do, I can take my laser. Now this one's unique, because if you look over there, we got that ceiling fan. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure for that right now as well. Okay, so that's four inches. And then I'll just measure from here. And this one I'll just use the tape. And we'll do 106 and 110. 106 and 110. If you look on this side where it meets in with the large beam, you can see that 15 degree back cut that just allows for it to be a nice tight fit down here at the bottom. So rather than having this whole piece in its surface kind of fight against this, we just back cut it and then you get that nice kind of a, I guess I'd call it like a coped effect. And we do the same thing over there against the tile. You can see that back cut and then it gives us a nice tight edge against the tile. The only complaint I have is that DeWalt 15 gauge is just giving us a lot of nail pops lately. But other than that, this is looking good. So when it comes to wrapping the side of this beam, like I mentioned earlier, I'm just, just gonna show you, but if you took a full board like this and push it into place, it's obviously gonna look straight up here, but when you go across a large span or even sometimes in short spans, you can have where it would be tilting a lot. And I'll show you an area like that later because I really think it's an important point to make. So that's why we're not gonna use this full size board. Now, if we weren't gonna put crown, then obviously we would have to do this and make adjustments, scribe and whatnot. And speaking of scribing and finding angles, really, you can see this always happens. There's a, a stud up here. It's actually called the top plate of the wall. It's always like the drywalls just kind of tapers down from that top plate. So no matter what, 
uh, 90% of the time we're going to have an open gap up here when we try to put a straight cut board up against a supposedly straight wall. So since we're not using this actual 1x8, I'll show you with a sample 1x6 and we're going to have to find the correct place where this is going to sit using our spacer, but it's going to be not as bad because it's we're skipping that top plate but there's still a slight angle there as you can see. Now what you can do, you can just make a straight edge with the carpenter's pencil. So you can just do this and then line up that right there with your miter saw uh, blade. And then you can take a tool like this. This is a simple scribe and it has offsets there. You can see three eighths, half, five eighths, so on and so forth and a quarter inch. You could just take the quarter inch and do that, that'd be the same as the carpenter's pencil. But ultimately what you're doing with this, you're gonna take this to your miter saw and put it uh, up against the fence and then dial in to that, that uh, angle there. And that's essentially what we're gonna have to do with all of these. You can even see this, this board right here is screwed just 90 degrees to that. And you can see how there's a big wide open gap down here. So right off the bat, you know it's not flush up against that wall. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna find out all these angles. Usually it's one or two degrees off. And then we gotta find the other side all the way on the other end. And really that's essentially it for these wrapping these beams with the sideboards. So here's one section that'll really illustrate what I was talking about, about using a full board. You could see right here, we've got nice contact. But over here, we've got about three eighths. And over here, we've got about a quarter off and you'll see this kind of rocking motion. If I push it all the way there, we get like three quarters off over here to my right. And then obviously if I push it up here, that's gonna just transfer back over here. And that's about a half inch right there. So this is one of the disadvantages of using that full board. So to make this easier, I'm gonna make a little jig and I just cut these two three quarter by three quarter blocks and that's the offset that we want, like I was talking about earlier. This right here, this little jig is gonna help us hold this in position right where we need to be so I can make those pencil marks and find the angle on each side. So right now we have two zero degree cuts and then I'm just gonna glue these two three quarter inch blocks right here and right here and this is gonna hold it in that perfect position. So now when we go in and we have our, say that's our bottom board. This one's way too wide, obviously, but let's just say that's our bottom beam section. It'll set that perfect three quarter offset. So that way I can mark this when it's up against the wall to the perfect position. So this will be perfect. So now that we have this, we'll go in, we can figure out for the left side and the right side, make those pencil marks. And if we don't have to adjust on some of them, sometimes you don't have to make a miter, then this flush cut will just tell me that I can just cut that board straight. So let's go check it out. So the first place we're gonna test out our little jig is up against our own beam right here, which should be an exact 90 right there. So yeah, that's exactly what we're after. That's what we would expect from this here. Now on the drywall side of it, like I already explained, it will probably be a little bit different. So that's exactly what we want right there. And it's still really tight, even though we weren't able to do that back cut on this. But anytime you can do that little back cut method and you're gonna hide it anyways, I always just take advantage of it. It's just one more thing that is gonna make it look better in the end. So we'll check this thing out in a few more spots up against our main beam here. We'll check it out over here as well. And same thing. So we're pretty much going to assume every cut on this main beam side is just going to be a flush cut. On our drywall side here, and our first verdict is going to be guilty. And it's sentenced to a miter change there on the angle. And what you can do, you can just line up your pencil right here on a 16th and you can hold it at an angle but you need to hold it at the same angle and drag it up at the same time. So you could just go like this. 
and you can see it basically inverses what you see here. So here you see the gap on the bottom and tight at the top. When I take the piece off, you see the gap here and tight at the bottom. So it's an inverse of what you're seeing, which is exactly what we want. So now I can take this right here, line it up with my miter saw blade, line my blade up on this line, and that is the angle I need to cut, which a sixteenth is really just like one degree. This piece right here will never actually get cut. There's no need to cut it, it's just a key to help you find these marks. Once you get this mark, you can erase this line and move on to the next one. Or if you wanted to, you could just flush cut this again and start from scratch if you don't wanna erase it. But that's essentially it. We're gonna do this right here to all of the, uh, the, uh, the boards here on this drywall side. So here we have all 16 boards cut to size with the angles on them. And we're gonna go ahead and install these now. This will be the completion of getting these beams built and installed. And then we just gotta wrap them with crown. Check it out. We finished up the beam install. We got all three sides wrapped. And I'm trying to figure out this gimbal here. So bear with me, it's, it's a little confusing. So uh, I'll get it figured out eventually though. I'm really happy with the way this came out. The next thing we're gonna do is wrap it in crown, but even just looking at these beams like this, when you look at it as the whole room, it just adds so much impact to this room without being overkill. And even when we put this crown on, 
it's not going to be overkill. It's just going to be a subtle crown, a five and a quarter, just wrapping all inside of this. So overall, really pleased with this install so far. And now it's on to the easy part, crown molding. All right, so that's going to do it for this video. Hopefully you guys learned something from this. You saw how easy it was to construct these beams for any ceiling and they're really easy to make. I wanted to make this and show you how you can create this just using those one buys from Windsor One. So there you have it. Let me know if you have any questions down below. We're not gonna make a video showing how we do the crown. I have several videos on crown. So we're just gonna wrap this though with a five and a quarter inch like colonial style crown. So that's it. I'll put a, if you wanna see the end result, I'll put a post on the community tab and then also on Instagram as well. So go check those out if you're not already. And I do get some questions anytime we do this, like am I worried about this stuff ever falling down? I mean, absolutely not. I would do pull-ups on any one of these beams and I have off camera. I don't wanna show it because, you know, I don't want someone to get the crazy idea and copy me and then sue me. So I can do pull-ups on, I actually did 50 pull-ups on this large beam right here, no issues. But if it ever did fall down, I mean, as, as long as it happened after the check cleared, I mean, that's all we can really ask for. 